everybody this is Pastor Bonnie and as promised I told you guys I would tell you a story while we're working on this part of the painting so this is actually part three and the title of this painting is the angel and the roses and this one has just been a super super easy fun painting to do if you look back you'll see where the first part of the painting we just painted the canvas black and then added the leaves and the stem or the roses sorry and then the second part was adding all the leaves and so this is kind of and I'm sorry because the light is shining on it through my window so it's kind of hard to see it but this is an 11 by 14 stretched canvas and I've actually just been having so much fun this one is kind of like a folk art kind of country sort of look and I thought you would enjoy working on it with me so the other two videos I did music but one of you reached out to me and asked me if I would talk during this one which I promised I would so I hope you guys are having a great day in spite of all this COVID junk that's going on and I know we're all sick to death of it tired of it but I trust that God has plans and purposes and he's working things out in us so I'm trying to be just like you guys and relax and trust God through it so what we're going to be doing is I have just some white acrylic paint and I just have a really slender paintbrush and a little bit of water and what I'm going to do is just really water down this paint and all I'm going to do is outline the angel because the reason why if I don't like the placement it's super super easy just to take a sponge and wash it off so this isn't really going to look like very much but it's going to let us see where the angel is going to be placed. And I love angels. I, I have been so blessed and honored to have been able to actually see them. So I have a really fun story I'm going to tell you. But I'm going to go back and forth between the painting and between telling you the story. So we're going to place the angel like right in here. And so what I'm going to do first is just draw the head. So it's really just like drawing with a pencil. I'm just going to do like a regular outline. And like I said, this isn't going to be anything fancy because I can go over it. And actually, that's a little... See? Just like that. So we're going to do her face first. And I always kind of do an oval shape. And we're going to put the neck in. So the story that I'm going to tell you is kind of really special. So I have two sons and two daughters. My middle daughter had a rare illness called PKU, which she was born with. And um, the doctor told her that she would never have children. Um, you know, they didn't know what kind of life she was going to have. She had to be on a really strict diet. And so she couldn't have any protein, no milk, eggs, meat, cheese, all the stuff that, you know, you feed kids when they're little, she couldn't have. So she got married to this really great guy and they ended up having one son and that was a miracle. So then of course she wanted to have another baby and so she got pregnant. And there's just a really fun story too because that one... I was going for a walk one day and I love to spend time with the Lord and you know you guys if you get to know Jesus he wants to be so personal in your life that he will actually talk to you and tell you things and when I say that I don't mean I hear audible voices I don't hallucinate any of that kind of weird stuff but this one particular day I get like impressions on the inside I call it whispers you know, you learn to listen to the whisper. So I was going for a walk and and see so you guys you can see all I'm doing is just filling this in. We're gonna go back over with lots of layers. And during my walk, I this time I, I, I had like this strong impression on the inside about this baby and I just had this impression it was gonna be a little girl. And that the baby's name, the Lord actually even told me the baby's name was going to be Abigail. And I thought, oh, that's just the coolest thing, right? And so, as time goes on, I, I did tell my daughter that 
I thought they were going to have a girl. I did not tell them the name because I felt like that needed to be her choice with her husband. And so it was really funny because a couple, couple weeks later, she goes, Mom, we're thinking about, we chose names for the boy and for the girl. And she said, and she named this list of names that she had picked if it was a little girl. And I kind of had to smile because lo and behold, one of the names that they chose was Abigail. And so sure enough, you know, I'm, I'm all excited thinking I'm not going to tell them that I already heard that in my spirit. So it wasn't too long after that. She wasn't too, too far along. She was probably, she was probably maybe 12 to 14 weeks along. And of course, nervous, you know, because the doctor told her she couldn't have babies. And so she started spotting this one day. And and you guys, and I'm sorry because my puppy hears me. So I'm sorry because she's going to probably bark while I'm working on this. But I'm upstairs, so hopefully it won't be too, too loud. Anyway, so she started spotting. She's all nervous and worried. And, and of course, I was a registered nurse. And, you know, sometimes when you're a nurse, it makes it really tough. Because you know all the what ifs and all the could, could things that could happen, you know. So I went to bed this one particular night and I was just in prayer over it and concerned, you know, even though I'm a woman of faith, I know Jesus, I have a personal relationship with him. We're still human, you know, we still battle things in our humanity. So I was worried and I had the coolest thing happen in the middle of the night. I heard this sound that literally woke me up. It sounded like, um, almost like a curtain flapping. And, and I will tell you guys, when I see angels, the way that they appear is the message. And you can see it doesn't pay to be left-handed because I just dragged the paint on, the, on here. And that's another reason why this is nice and dry. See, I can just erase it. Um, but anyway, I heard like this sound like, like a curtain flapping and it was loud enough so that it woke me up I was in a dead sleep and I look oh and I was going to tell you guys the way that they appear to me how they're dressed is what the message is I don't usually hear them I don't usually hear like an audible voice or anything like that so this angel I wake up and I actually see this beautiful angel and it was flitting around the room so fast that the wings made this whirring noise, this flapping noise. And I could tell that the angel was in a big hurry. And, it, and you know, usually when I see them, they're androgynous. But this particular one had the shape of a female form. And I, I do believe they can change their appearance based on what we need at the time and what will bring us the most comfort. So this particular one, um, she had, she was translucent almost. And like, she, she looked almost like clear, but she was the color of the rainbow. It was just beautiful. Like, you know how if you ever look at an opal and you put it in the sunlight and the colors just dance? That's what she looked like. It was just incredible. And she was flitting around the room really fast trying to get her work done to go on. You know, I know she had lots of other people. And I was given the understanding that she was a messenger angel. And she had been sent to send me a message. And the message was that my daughter was going to be okay, that I wasn't to worry, that this indeed was going to be a baby girl named Abigail. And like I said, I didn't see that, but I heard that in my spirit. So, anyway, sure enough, I didn't say anything to anybody, but, and I just want to go back, look, see how we, all we're doing is just a shape, it's like a, I like to do feminine shapes when I do angels, um, and I wish I could do them justice, they don't look anything like what I've really seen, I just don't have the ability, I wish I did, but I don't, but anyway, so, sure enough, the, my daughter 
went to the doctors and the doctor said everything was going to be okay. The spotting went away and, and they did an ultrasound of the baby. And of course, it was a little girl. So we were all overjoyed to know that there was this little girl coming that was going to join the family. And, and so it was just kind of cool because when they got ready, she ended up having a C-section for this little baby. And they did decide to name her Abigail. So just exactly like I, what I had heard and the message that the angel came was exactly what happened. So, you know, that's, that's how important God is. A lot of the details are to us, to God. He treasures having time with us. And so that's my story. And I wanted to encourage you that God loves you just as much as he loves me. He's not a respecter of persons. He will speak to your heart about things too. But it's important that you ask Jesus into your heart. And you know, it's not about religion. I know it's not popular these days to be a, a Christ follower. But I can tell you, it's the best thing I've ever did in my life. So it's just really simple. You just say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. And that's all it is. And you immediately will become his child. And then he'll begin to speak to you about things as you learn to spend time with him. So I'm going to stop this video for now. I've been trying to upload these in little segments so they won't be quite so long. But I'll hold this up so you can see. See, it's just a, like a shadow of what we're going to be working on. I'm going to let it dry and then we'll pick off where we left off. And I just want to thank you guys for spending the time with me. I always love each and every one of you. And we'll come back when this is dry. God bless.